Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 120. Dealing with Disappointment. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my sensitive and understanding co-host, Madison. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm all right. How about you? I'm doing okay. Anything exciting this week? Um, I'm in oh, my week of band camp. So how's that been going? I'm kind of mentally exhausted at this point. Um, I can imagine. It's been a very long week. I've had a couple breakdowns, you know. Kind of rough weather out there doing it this week, too, isn't it? Yeah, various occasions we've had to come inside in thunderstorms. Yeah. Uh, it's been hot, too, hasn't it, the last couple of days? Yeah. In fact, we actually weren't allowed today. We were actually let out early because we weren't technically allowed to be on the field. Like, Ooh. like from 11 to 9 to 10, I believe, we weren't allowed on the field. Wow. Well, you know, we may... We might do a podcast on marching band and, and delve into that a little bit deeper, a little a little further down the line there. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. It sounds like it's something interesting to talk about. But that's not what we're talking about today. Yeah. Today we're talking about dealing with disappointment. So I'm sorry if you're disappointed that we're not talking about marching band today. <laughs> um, it's fine. <laughs> okay, good. So this week we're talking about disappointment and how to deal with it. We'll discuss what disappointment is and what causes us to feel disappointed. We'll explore the signs to look for that indicate our teens are disappointed and some common things that can cause disappointment. We'll finish up with some tips on how to help teens deal with disappointment. Ready to get into it? Sure. All right. So what is disappointment? So this definition comes from a website we've used a few times called psychologytoday.com. Disappointment is perhaps the most immediate emotion children experience after a perceived failure. Disappointment involves the feelings of thwarted desire, loss, and discouragement when children fail to fulfill their hopes and expectations or those of others. Children are going to feel disappointment when they don't achieve their goals or believe they've let you down. Disappointment is a natural response to failure, but some children react to their disappointment in ways that increase the likelihood of more failure and disappointment. These children who are faced with disappointment reduce their effort, give up easily, or quit altogether. This reaction to disappointment can cause them to feel incompetent and inadequate, which if persistent, will lower their self-esteem and will definitely prevent them from achieving their future goals. Though some disappointment following failure is normal, children who are hit hard by disappointment mope around the house, look demoralized, and feel sorry for themselves for far longer than they should. So let me ask you, when, I mean, I'm assuming at some point in time you felt disappointment, right? I mean, yeah, like, it's, Pretty much an abnormal emotion at this point, so, yeah. And can you give us an example of how you dealt with it? Uh, I guess I can kind of bring up a marching band reference. Okay, that's perfect. Um, so we are talking marching band today. No disappointment. <laughs> I mean, it's a reference that I can have from, you know. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. So, um, I guess when I've... Some points when I would feel disappointed in marching band would probably be like when I don't, when I mess something up, like a piece of music or um, a visual aspect or 
really something like that. Um, I do sometimes feel disappointed in myself that I wasn't able to really get it on the first try. And while some of them have been extreme to the point where I can't really uh, find a positive to it and I kind of get have it get to my head, other times it's just like, okay, I know that... Other, I know that this is hard on everyone, and I'm not, and I'm not the only one who doesn't know how to do this. Um, all I really need to do is pick up and just try not to do what I did. So, when you feel disappointment in this specific type of situation, is it something that's centered on you that you're disappointed in yourself, or is there some uh, concern or fear? or consideration that you're disappointing the rest of the, the band or your band leader or section leader or something like that? I mean, it's kind of both in certain instances. A lot of times I do feel disappointed if I can't do something right. But then on top of that, individually, if I mess something up, I feel like I'm going to mess the entire show up. Because we all have individual parts, and for the most part, no one has the same part. So, if I mess something up, then I feel like the whole form's gonna be messy, and the show's basically gonna not be as polished as we were hoping. Yeah, and performing arts is very difficult when it comes to that, especially when you're doing a, something that's unique, um... You know, in, in high school, I was in choir myself, but it was a group chorus, and I I was never expected to do solos. I think if I was, I probably would have freaked out and not done very well. I can sing in so much as I can make relatively in-tune noises with my voice, but I was never someone who could get up in front of a crowd and, and do it solo. So in that situation, I kind of got lost in the crowd there. So if I did bad or I missed a note or something like that, my voice wasn't pronounced enough to have really brought the crowd down. However, in a situation like yours where, you know, you're playing a unique part or one of maybe two or three parts, it's noticeable, especially when you're visually out there doing it. What do you do to combat that kind of uh, anxiety or worry when maybe you have a stumble or you miss a note or something like that? How do you deal with that? Well, I have to kind of just continue to follow the form um, and try to look like, okay, I know what I'm doing. Just pretend like you didn't miss that because that's kind of what they actually are teaching us. Like, if you do mess up, own it, basically. Like, if you mess up, okay, just don't go back and try doing it again. Just own your mistake and th and make it look like, oh, yeah, I was supposed to do that. So you fake it till you make it. <laughs> Pretty much. It's funny. They told us the same thing in choir, that if you miss a note or you forget a line, mouth something. They might not, people might not realize that you're mouthing the wrong thing, but if you stand there and you look dumbfounded and your mouth isn't moving, they know that you've lost your lines at that point in time. Yeah. So it, it kind of told us the same thing. Kind of just look like you're going through the motions. And, you know, for me it worked. But I wasn't one of those frontline performers where all that pressure was on me either. Yeah. So what's, uh, what's the next thing we want to talk about? So the next thing we want to talk about is why we feel disappointment. And this comes from a website called parents.au.reachout.com. A lot of dots in that name. A lot of dots. <laughs> so, we can feel disappointed or even distressed when actual events don't line up with what we expected. We may be disappointed in other people, in a situation, or in ourselves. Disappointment is, a, is complex because it's made up of frustration, anger, sadness, and sometimes disgust. And just like other emotions, disappointment is normal, inevitable, and important to experience. It helps to build resilience and overcome this feeling and over and overcoming this feeling teaches you the pro to process and help work. and help you <laughs> I don't think this is written right and help it it teaches you the to 
Overcoming teaches you to process. Right. It, it looks like it's a typo. Anyway, work with me here, <laughs> will you? I'm sorry. <laughs> we read through this, too. Uh, we, we so it, it helps you to process the feelings and, it, and work through the emotions of those feelings. So, so let me ask you, based on what we talked about there, have you ever been disappointed in someone else? Um, in certain instances, especially if I thought, you know, they wouldn't do something like that, I feel like that would mainly be one of the reasons why I would be disappointed in someone. Like, say, one of my friends did something mean that really they don't, is something that they wouldn't really do. I'd kind of feel disappointed in them. Like, why'd you do that? You don't, you don't act like this. Why are you acting like this? Right, right. So I have felt disappointment from other people. Do they know that you're disappointed? Have you revealed that to them? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes, like, I'm just like, hey, maybe you shouldn't have done that. I don't, like, express. Like, specifically say, I'm disappointed in you. Like, right. how people... Well, I ask because sometimes people don't realize that, that others have expectations on them. So when they disappoint those expectations, the people that are doing the disappointing might not necessarily know they're disappointing you because they don't know that you have those expectations. You don't expect, you know, Susie to go over and take someone's toy. You know, I mean, that's human nature that you wouldn't, you would expect people to, to behave properly like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes we don't, we set expectations that are, that are unvocalized expectations. And then if we don't talk about the disappointment in those, they, there's no lesson to be learned and there's no path to corrective action at that point. Right. Yeah. So, you know, if you're going to, if you haven't vocalized the expectations and they know that you expect them to be like a decent human being, then when you're disappointed in them, it, it benefits them to know that you felt that level of disappointment. Yeah. So are you disappointed in anything right now? Uh, that dog barking is really disappointing me <laughs> while we're trying to do a podcast. That's kind of annoying. This is the second time in like two weeks. I need to get like a dog whistle or something and just go out there and drive him crazy beforehand. <laughs> So anyway, we're going to take a quick break. <clears throat> Hopefully the dog will stop barking. And uh, we're going to come back and talk about how to identify disappointment in teens. We'll be right back. All righty. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, World Boss Hunts, Star Wars Trivia, Guild Lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. Today we're talking about disappointment. And now that we've discussed what disappointment is and why we feel disappointment, now we're going to talk about how to identify disappointment in teens. So some of the signs to look for in your teen for disappointment include that they've indicated that they feel let down, they've become withdrawn or pessimistic, they're upset that things aren't perfect, or probably one of the worst signs to the point where you might need to, where you definitely need to intervene, they're using drugs or alcohol. Yeah, that's pretty bad when you get to that point. But let's take a second and actually talk about a couple of these. <clears throat> so feeling let down, a lot of times, unless you're very observant or they're very let down, it's really hard to tell when they're feeling let down unless you're having regular discussions with them. Yeah. 
Um, so having that open line of communication is always helpful. Having them feel comfortable coming to talk to you. When you feel let down, do you do you vocalize it very well, or is that something you internalize? Sometimes I internalize it. Sometimes I indi- I do try letting other people know. Uh, typically, if I'm around people I know will help me, if I do feel disappointed, I'll let it out. If I'm around people who I don't really feel understand, well, know me that well, I probably would just kind of internalize it. Right. So feeling withdrawn or becoming withdrawn and pessimistic, those are pretty more, pretty much more visual, you know, where you can pick up on it if, if you stop talking or you spend more time in your room. Are these things that you've, uh, symptoms that you've exhibited when you've been disappointed? A lot of times when I am disappointed, I do become pretty pessimistic. Um, and I'm kind of negative whenever I am disappointed. Um, so I would probably say that I would probably exemplify the pessimistic side. So the next one is one that obviously, you know, we've talked about on the show before, and that's when you get upset that things aren't perfect. And specifically, I'm referring obviously to your academics where your academic grades are oftentimes about as perfect as I, as a parent have a right to expect, Mm. but you may get an A, but it's an it's a ninety five, and that's something that you feel disappointed in because of the expectations that you put on yourself. Yeah. So, and and clearly you're you're very outwardly facing when you're upset about stuff like that. Yeah. So that's something that that mommy and daddy have picked up on numerous times in the past. And usually when we see that, we try to intervene. We try to find out what's bothering you. And and we do try to focus on the positives. Do you find that to be at all helpful? Does it help you to deal with that level of disappointment? It does. And unfortunately, but, you know, unfortunately, my expectations for myself are like, they're slowly going down, but they're still to the point where they're a lot higher than yours. Right. And And we don't want you to lower your expectations. We just want you to have realistic expectations. Yeah. Um, So using drugs and alcohol, obviously, thankfully, this isn't a problem for us at this point in time. Yep. Uh, But it's definitely something that's worth keeping an eye on because a lot of times when teens turn to substance abuse to deal with these things, they're doing it in secret. They're not doing drugs in front of their parents. They're not getting drunk in front of their parents. They're doing it out of out of eye shot of their parents. Uh, so for for parents who notice a decrease in the amount of time that their teen is spending with them, that's something where you probably want to be a little bit more diligent to keep an eye on. Unless you know they're in marching band and they spend twelve hour days. Right, right, and we know where you're at there, and we know that you're safe and you're you're with friends and and yeah. proper adult supervision. So. What's the next thing we have? Um, now we have some things to look for. So the first thing is change in sleeping patterns. Are they getting eight hours of sleep daily? But I mean, like, like who, who gets actually... eight hours of sleep? <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be better to phrase it as, are they getting enough sleep? That's probably fair. <laughs> like, I don't really know too many people that sleep for eight hours. So. Unless you're a cat. Unless you're a cat. You sleep for, like... I don't know. 18, 18 hours. hours. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next up is to look for a change in behavior. Are they more easily irritable or exhibit a lack of energy? That was a question. <laughs> um, also a change in activity patterns. Are they engaging less with family members or staying alone in their room more? As There's also a change in eating patterns. Are they eating more or less than before? Also, changes in overall health. Do they complain of headaches, stomach aches, or muscle pain? And finally, we have changes in mood. Do you see mood swings that are out of the ordinary? Crying, laughing, or gloomy? And it's funny because a lot of these symptoms are the same type of symptoms that you look for in teens that may be uh, engaged in substance abuse as well. Mm. You know, because they're withdrawing, so you're not going to see as much of them. 
the substance abuse affects their mood. It affects their energy levels. Uh, they do have mood swings. They have physical symptoms that manifest. So these things here are very important to keep an eye on because it might be more than just disappointment because these things can signal a lot of other things. Mm-hmm. So as parents, we may not always recognize what could warrant disappointment. Other events beyond the current global crisis may cause disappointments. Things like an injury that prevents playing sports. Or maybe a family conflict causes them to miss a school dance. Maybe a loss prevents, you know, a sporting loss prevents them from getting into the playoffs. And that's a measure of disappointment for them. Maybe there's an unexpected breakup and, and that gets the, the teens down. Maybe there's a friendship that's experiencing some growing pains because there's a lot of that that happens in the teen years as well. You know, maybe a disconnect occurs from regular routines and schedules. Could be because you've joined a new club or something like that. So maybe you're missing certain things that you experienced before. Maybe there's a show you watched. Maybe there's a certain activity you did. Maybe there's a game that you played with your friends that you can't do now because you've joined uh, some extracurricular activity. All these things can cause disappointment as well. We all feel disappointment at some time or another, but it can become a problem if it's not processed in a healthy way. So we're going to take another break. We're going to come back and we're going to give you some hints on how to help your teen get through disappointment. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. Today we are talking about dealing with disappointment. And now we're going to talk about how to help your teen get through disappointment. So the first thing we have here is to help them to have realistic expectations of themselves. If your teen's expectations of themselves are too high or unrealistic, they, they will be unlikely to meet them. Talking to your teen about where their expectations come from can help them develop a healthier relationship with the standards they set for themselves. Maybe they're getting good grades, but they still feel disappointed in themselves. I somehow feel targeted here. I can't imagine why. <laughs> help them appreciate what they are achieving as opposed to what they aren't. Speaking about their strengths and having a positive approach will show them that no matter what, they should be proud of themselves. And let's face it, this is a struggle that we have consistently with you. And... It, it's a good struggle to have the fact that you're achieving as much as you are, but you want to achieve more is a good thing. You know, there's no way of, of referring to you as an underachiever or anything like that. Um, but when you set goals that are too high that you can't meet because they're unrealistic, it's probably not healthy. Yeah. Uh, so clearly it's something we still need to work on. And we'll continue to work on it. The next thing they talk about is help them to process disappointment in others, which is what we talked about earlier. Sometimes teens feel disappointed in someone, such as a parent they were expecting to see or a friend who didn't finish a group assignment. While it can be helpful to empathize with them, it's important not to encourage negative emotions. Try to avoid making excuses or promises to soften the blow Try to avoid bad-mouthing or criticizing the person who let them down, which can increase 
their negative feelings toward the person. Explain in detail why the situation happened, such as, you know, their parent missed their sports game because they couldn't get time off of work. Focus on your team and their feelings rather than the other person. For example, instead of saying this person decided not to show up and cares more about themselves than you, try something along the lines of, I'm sure that must be disappointing for you to hear that. A lot of times it's about dealing with the realities of it. You know, we've, we've talked in past podcasts that sometimes when you start to interject your feelings into dealing with these types of things, we wind up dealing with a fiction that we create ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're trying to help someone get through the disappointment, you want to focus on, on the facts. You know, sometimes things happen. Sometimes, you know, someone get caught, gets caught up in traffic. You can't get out of work in time. Uh, could be any number of things that cause that level of disappointment. So in dealing with disappointment and, and how mommy and I help you, do you find that we do focus on the positives? Do you find that our, attempts to help you get through disappointment are effective at all. Yeah, you you definitely have um, helped me through um, whenever I do feel disappointment. Whenever I come home upset about my grades, you always say, well, let's see what the question was and how we can improve for later. You still help me focus on the positives, saying that you that I did get a really good grade and that I did good on the rest of the test and it was just the one question that I messed up, that for later, that for next time, I'll make sure to fix it. Yeah, and, and one of the things that, that we try to do on our side here when we talk about things like this is not just focus on the positives and the truths of it, but it's about what can we take away from it? You know, what can you learn? What's the lesson to be learned here? So let's take something that, that may be perceived as a negative and turn it around and turn it into a positive. Mm -hmm. You know, we've learned not to do this or we've learned to let that person know that we have expectations so they might not disappoint us in the future. Um, so it's an opportunity to improve, and any chance we have to improve is a positive thing. Yep. What's next on our list? Next up, we have encourage positive activities. If you find your teen is dwelling on their disappointment, maybe they're watching a lot of TV alone, or zoning out in their other unhealthy w in other unhealthy ways, create opportunities for them to deal with their feelings. Research shows that ha that an Shows that an effective way. Shows that research shows that an effective way to do this is to involve them in activities they enjoy. For the record, we didn't read through this section. You didn't. You thought we didn't have to. So I didn't. <laughs> I thought it was like research shows that survey says. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's I'm focus. You can encourage joining social activities that help your teen feel connected to fam friends and family. You can probably intertwine them. Right. <laughs> Taking part in sports, music, crafts, or games that help your teen feel confident and in control. Keeping up regular commitments and routines, such as an agreement to mow the neighbor's lawn every fortnight. Who or says fortnight? <laughs> Unless you're playing the game. <laughs> yeah. Or making pancakes for the family every Sunday. That would be more realistic. That, well, in our case, it would be <laughs> French toast. I mean, yeah. Learning how to process disappointment is a life skill. While talking to your teen about these things is important, it's also useful to show them how to work through your emotions. How... how <laughs> How you work through your emotions. Either one would have worked. How you work through your emotions. I'm so sorry. Maybe we should have read through <laughs> this. I'm so sorry. That process will include avoiding blaming other people, including yourself, for your teen's feelings. Okay, so the, the million-dollar question <laughs> here, how do you deal with your disappointment? What is your number one way of dealing with disappointment? A lot of it is, well, trying to do things and distract myself from it. Um, 
doing some positive things and hopefully not just completely sitting on my cat on my bed and just doing nothing. When that happens, though, do you recognize that that's what you're doing to try to escape that disappointment or, or push it aside? Yeah, I do sometimes recognize it, and sometimes I'm like, okay, I need human interaction. Okay. So there are definitely certain instances. That's usually when you show up over my shoulder like some <laughs> disembodied spirit and scare me to death, right? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you have methods of dealing with it. Yep. And is this a topic you've ever talked to your friends about? Um, I know that my friends have been disappointed in themselves in certain points, and I do kind of try to mentor them like you mentor me in a way. Like, especially if they got a grade they didn't like, I'm like, all right, well, let's see what you didn't do right, and we'll make sure you improve for later. Right. Um, you know, stuff like that. Well, that's good. Kind of a life coach type thing to, to keep them focused. That's good. Yeah. Have you ever been disappointed in mommy or daddy? Um. You can be honest. I'm not going to get angry. I guess with some of the jokes you tell, I can kind of be like, uh, I don't know. I don't okay. know if that's like disappointment or not. It's just like, yeah, that was not a good joke. Well, and I freely admit that nine out of ten jokes probably aren't good jokes, but they're dad jokes, so they're appropriate. Yeah. Um, other than that, I don't really know if I've really been disappointed in you guys. Like, I mean, sometimes I'd feel disappointed whenever, like, you say, like, how bad cursing is and not to, and telling me not to do it, where later on you're just, like, cursing out at about stuff that happened at work and such, and I'm like... That's a good point. That's a fair point. And, like, in my head, I'm kind of thinking, hypocrite. <laughs> yes. A little. I could totally see that, and, I, and I'll, I'll give you that one. And, um, but, but that's kind of it. The reason I ask is, you know, there was a lot of times uh, growing up as a teenager that I was disappointed in my parents, not so much my mom, but my dad... Yeah, I can and, see that. You know, we've talked about my dad on this podcast here. Uh, but there was a lot of things that he was disappoint disappointing in me for. Um, but there were times that, that I kind of was disappointed in my mom. Ironically, it was mainly because of what I later came to appreciate were some of her positive qualities. And that was her tolerance for my dad. Mm. Like my dad used to yell at her. Like, scream at her and treat her terrible, and she would sit there and take it. And I, I was disappointed that she didn't fight back. Because my first instinct when anytime a bully, I see a bully doing something like that, it's to fight back and to stop it. But my mother was far wiser than that. And she knew that for the sake of keeping the, ha the peace of the house, she was kind of taking one for the team. And it wasn't until years later that I, I really fully appreciated that and, and what she did for the the family. Because had she fought back, um, they probably would have gotten the divorce. And my mother didn't work. So it would have been a lot harder on the family than it was. Uh, so the, the dis disappointment that I had turned into grudging respect later on, which I thought was kind of a interesting turn of events. Yeah. So uh, there will be times throughout your teen's uh, life when their expectations won't be met and they'll feel negativity about themselves and other people. With the right support, this is an opportunity for growth. Help them find ways to manage their feelings and to build their resilience because if nothing else, disappointment does build resilience. Mm -hmm. The old saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger um, or the song. Well, you know, nowadays it's what doesn't kill you mutates and tries to kill you again, but, <laughs> um, which is a sad testament of what life is like today. But really, I mean, disappointment makes us stronger. It teaches us how to deal with those emotions. Uh, it teaches us how to deal with the other emotion, the other emotional baggage that comes along with all that. And any chance that we have to try to take a negative and flip it around into a positive, it's a good thing. Yeah. So it's a growth opportunity for us. 
Uh, but, you know, it's one of those things where you don't want to see your kids hurt. You don't want to see them disappointed, but you can't avoid it. Yeah. So if, if nothing else, at least better equip them to deal with it when it does happen because it will happen. Yeah. So that was all we had today. A short, short podcast today. Uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll get your closing thoughts. Go ahead with your closing thoughts. All righty. So to everyone out there, I just wanted to say that disappointment, like pretty much every emotion, is inevitable and is something that, well, can't be avoided, but should be something that isn't also feared. It's something that can make us, that can help us improve, make us better people, or even, you know, just make us stronger in general. And I definitely think that you should recognize when your teens are disappointed in themselves, because if not handled right, disappointment can be extremely negative. But turning it into something positive and something that can help them later on is probably the best way to go. Okay. Wise words, as always. Uh, programming note before I plug the show. We are in the process of switching our video hosting provider. So I don't know if it's common knowledge or not. But our audio podcasts are carried by one company called uh, Buzzsprout who they're doing a fantastic job. I want to give them a shout out. Their, their rates are reasonable. Their service is fantastic. And I love, I love them to death. Uh, our video feed was being carried currently still is technically being carried by Castos and they were okay. I was satisfied with their service, uh, right up until they gave me notification that they're doubling our monthly cost, which being a nonprofit, or a no profit or a really deep in the red podcast as far as expense goes. Um, I can't afford to, to, to pay that double that cost. So I was forced to find another hosting provider. We're in the process of transitioning over. Uh, I started moving some of the uh, archives over right now. They do throttle how many I can move over. So it's probably going to take a, a couple several weeks to get everything moved over so you may see a bit of a hiccup if you subscribe to the video version of the podcast that's listed as insights into things uh, we we didn't go away we're not going away we're just switching hosting providers and we'll be back up and running everything will be running fine in a few weeks so don't panic but in the meantime we do encourage you to subscribe to the podcast you can find the audio version of this podcast listed as insights into teens. The video version is listed as insights into things and will eventually be insights into things again somewhere else. Uh, but we're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, anywhere you can get a podcast these days. I would also encourage you to uh, give us your feedback. We're looking for show notes, uh, show suggestions for topics. Uh, but we'd love to hear from you. You know, do any of the topics that we talk about, do they do they hit home with you? Have you found them helpful at all? Uh, we'd love to get some feedback from you that we can include on the show. You can email the anything over to comments at insightsintothings.com. Uh, you can hit us on Twitter. You can mess, direct message us or tweet us at insights underscore things. You can also find high-res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. Um, and we stream both on YouTube and Twitch. On Twitch, we're at twitch.tv slash insights into things. We stream five days a week, uh, both our live shows and we do rebroadcasts of all of our shows. Uh, if you are an Amazon Prime member, you do get a free Twitch Prime subscription. We'd appreciate that. That does help us out to pay some of the bills. Um, also, audio versions of the podcast are available to listen to on the web at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. We're also on Facebook at facebook.com slash insightsintothingspodcast, as well as Instagram at instagram.com slash insightsintothings, or you can get links to all those on our website at insightsintothings.com and you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, 
And in Tent in the Tomorrow, our monthly podcast hosted by you and my brother, Sam. Outstanding. And I think that's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.